Welcome to Porsche's future. A five-seater crossover for a company known for sports cars to a new future of being primarily known for things other than sports cars. Now it's an easy, but frankly cheap shot to call this a baby Cayenne. It's not so much related to the Cayenne other than brand as much as it's related to the Audi Q5, which is the corporate group's MLP or modular longitudinal platform. But beyond that, these two are very different vehicles. They have 70% different parts, Porsche is quick to point out. Big parts, like the engine and powertrain, the body, the suspension. Now that's the engineering point of view. For the shopper, let's compare it to a Cayenne. The Macan is 6.8 inches shorter in overall length. It's a little bit narrower, has a 3.5 inch tighter wheelbase, and weighs nearly 600 pounds less. Now inside the Macan cabin, you'll be familiar if you know Porsches at all in the modern idiom. You've got, in this case, their latest three gauge cluster. The right hand one is an LCD screen. Looks particularly cool when you got a map in there. Porsche's PCM head unit has never been my favorite for connected car tech or great interface. They kind of march to their own drummer, and that drummer's on acid once in a while. It's a death of a thousand cuts. There's no one thing I can show you that is egregious, but everything about it's a little bit wonky for some reason. That said, it's got almost every source you're going to want. Under tuner, you've got AM, FM, satellite radio, HD radio, and they have AHA. The AHA app is an interesting sort of a roundup of both streaming stations, information sources, Yelp for finding restaurants. And under media, you've got your optical disc, iPod, your auxiliary jack, and your Bluetooth streaming. Your map quality is pretty good. Entering destinations is rather well done via the voice. Would you like to start route guidance? But what I'm missing here, for example, is there's no live search for anything the way Audi already has and has had for a while. There's no native Pandora integration. This disagreed by over half an hour on arrival time with the directions on my Google Nav, and I'll let you guess which one was right. And voice command is very compartmentalized. When I'm on an audio screen and push the voice button, I can't issue a nav command, which should take me to that screen and do it. I have to hit a button to go to the right mode of the head unit, then I can use voice command to drive that slice of it. A lot of audio options, of course, the premium German car is always going to have. You have your base audio system, which is display based, like you see, of course. Then you can go up to Bose audio, or if you're really nuts, you can go up to Burmester audio for $4,000 plus. I never hear four to six thousand dollars in these Burmester and B&O audio upgrades, maybe you do. And one last thing on the media sources, where a lot of these cars used to use this sort of multi-pigtail they call the MDI to connect to stuff in the glove box, they've now joined the rest of the world with an aux jack and USB port right in the console. The center console I've never made peace with in modern Porsches. Maybe you love it. It's just not for me. It's got that Acura disease of putting a thousand buttons in one place, and they're not that logical. Here's the off-road button. Way up here is the crawl control button. Those are related, but they're in different zip codes, and everything is almost identical. So to go from Sport to Sport Plus, you have to do some reading. There is no physical way to get these without sight. Now going to the engine bay on a Macan is an interesting experience. You pull up this big one-piece aluminum clamshell hood that does some interesting things. You see how it surrounds the headlights, leaves them down when it lifts, and you've got some ducting, these rubber surrounded ducts for the intake, breathe through some holes punched in the underside that are actually channels that breathe through the front of the hood that goes to the grill through a mesh channel here. It's all rather well thought out, but they tend to do that. Now the engines on these cars are all turbos, but only if you get the larger one, the 3.6 6 liter is the vehicle called a turbo. The smaller turbo car is just called the S, S perhaps for screwy naming policy. Now as much as this car has some lineage to the Q5, shared engines are not one of those areas. This is not a shared motor with anything else. It's a Porsche engine only. Same for the 3 liter S. Twin turbos, not a bi-turbo. That's a significant difference. Your numbers are pretty stout. 400 horsepower, that could be a record for a crossover, 406 pound-feet of torque. All Macans are all-wheel drive, and all Macans have a seven-speed dual clutch. Porsche calls it a PDK. Zero to 60 on this guy's 4.6. It'll get faster if you get the Sport Chrono option. And the overall weight's over 4,200 pounds. Not a featherweight vehicle, but as I mentioned earlier, almost 600 pounds lighter than a Cayenne. MPG is rated at 1723. You're probably going to see 20 on a good day and teens most of your life with this vehicle, at least if you drive it the way it's meant to be. Okay, underway in our little twin turbo friend, you'd hardly know it's got turbos. Really nicely dialed out turbo lag. Very impressed by that. 
And this engine has very wide squat bores, so it loves to rev. Completing the picture, this PDK has quick shifts, and they get even faster if you put it in Sport Plus. I mean, they are bang, bang, bang. So nice overall powertrain. Now let's talk about the all-wheel drive system. It can go 100% rear or 100% front-wheel drive. It's very flexible. In normal driving, it's heavily biased toward the rear for a sports car experience. All the turbo cars have adaptive suspension standard. It's optional on the S McCann's. Uh, when you've got it in Sport Plus, for example, that gives you a sportier, firmer underpinning as well as dialing in your throttle tip in, holding shifts higher, as you can hear right now, and making those shifts quicker as well. You also get different exhaust throating, not in the exhaust of the engine, but downstream in the pipes. It opens up the baffles a little more. When this car's in Sport Plus, it's not so much a compact crossover, it's really much more of a five-seat Cayman. Now let's talk about some efficiency tech. <laughs> Love that sound. Uh, we've got auto start-stop, defeatable with this button down here on the console, and I used it because I found the auto start-stop re-kicked the engine pretty well. That fired up quickly. But the drive line took another heartbeat or so to engage frequently, and that made it just too long and kind of a mess. You've also got brake regen, as so many cars do these days, to take parasitic load off the alternator. And you've also got decoupled coasting. On the freeway you're coasting along, let's say, it will decouple the drive line so there's less drag on the vehicle. Now, in terms of interior volume, it's quite nice in the front row. Doesn't feel too tight at all. Uh, the back row, most people who get back there say, oh, it's kind of small back here. And this vehicle does give up um, a little under 10% of its cargo volume in the rear cargo bay compared to an Audi Q5. The execution of the haunch is a little different. The active lane keep technology is, shall we say, aggressive. But I found in many situations I got lane bounce, going from left to right within the lines until the car finally gave up. Now we're in San Francisco, not a lot of long straight freeways here. Now, how important is this car to Porsche? It's huge. It's expected to get them rather quickly to their long-stated goal of selling 200,000 cars a year. It's very likely going to replace the Cayenne as their best-selling single model. And all that together will move Porsche soundly to being a maker of SUVs first with some sports cars thrown in. The Macan is now Porsche's cheapest model by a hair, but of course, not exactly cheap. Of course, you can option a Porsche till you die, but here's a rough number. About 73 base with destination for a turbo. 4,600 gets you the premium package for park sensors, rear camera, vented seats, panoramic roof, and some lane keep and blind spot tech. The Burmester audio option is a lavish 4,300 bucks. Air suspension for 1,400 takes you lower on the freeway, higher off the road. Torque vectoring would be interesting at 1,500. They nickel and dime you for AHA support at $210 and $420 for Car Connect to have an app that does telematics with the vehicle remotely. All in, we're at about $86,000, seen that style. Now, the Macan is almost certainly going to be a monster hit. That's basically a given. Its timing is really good, and it's tapping into an apparently unending vein of love we have for the compact SUV or crossover. It also gets into an area of what you might call the family sports car, that the Cayenne is just too big to argue. As you saw, it's not a cabin tech leader, but Porsches just never seem to be. Now, before you go shopping for a Macan, make sure you start with the Macan S, with the less potent powertrain. Yes, you're going to give up 8 tenths of a second, 0 to 60, you're also going to give up $21,000, $22,000 in debt. You'll lose the adaptive suspension that comes with the turbo. I would also skip the air suspension. You're not going off-road, you're going to Whole Foods. And I think for a lot less money, you could very well capture the essence of this cool new model. More cars driven CNET style. Standing by now at CNETOnCars.com. Click on the road.